be good. And <clears throat> hello, everybody, and welcome to Itchy Painty, the game where I just ruined my cool meme that I was going to do, like, right out of the gate. Because um, <laughs> y'all saw I actually have the, the real board game. So trolling y'all with an unboxing of the RE2 board game survival horror expansion probably isn't as entertaining uh, as it would have been had the board game not still been in the shot. Uh, it's because your boy is a failure as a producer. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to breeze on. Uh, I am uh, Painty, a.k.a. It's Burger Time. Joining me, as always, is my beautiful co-host, uh, Itchy, a.k.a. Oh, uh, boy Wonder Adam. How you doing, Adam? I'm good. Yourself? Ah, living the dream. I got to tell you, <clears throat> um, been a hard few days for me in the in the old burger time household oh just because you've had your minis and you haven't been able to get into it oh i'm so painty uh, me too actually <laughs> i really wanted just to sit down and just, just really just go to town painting uh, immediately yeah um so there'll probably be there'll probably be a stream where that totally happens <laughs> um excellent Boosty but Adam. Uh, i need to be boosted Adams, boost the atom. Let me get. Here we go. Adam, Adam boosted. Checking Adam levels. Hello, this is me being boosted and louder. The same Adam, only fifty percent louder. It's closer to thirty-five. Let's not get excited. Okay, well I'm just trying to hype people. It's true. Fifty percent louder. Look who it is. Well, well, well. Look Listen as is. I drink Diet Dr. Pepper. The best diet. The only diet soda that actually tastes like the regular soda. I think that's like their whole marketing stick, right? It should be because it is very Dr. Peppery. Um question about Dr. Pepper. So when when so Dr. Pepper's twenty three flavors, right? When they do sure. cherry they do cherry Dr. Pepper, is cherry already one of the favors? Or does well, Sherry I, Dr. Pepper have a 24th flavor? So, I always heard Dr. Pepper referred to as a quote-unquote spicy cherry soda. Huh. Um, so, I I mean, when they do cherry, is it just another... I mean, it's just more cherry, I think. Yeah, cream soda flavor is insanely good. And again, do they add the cream soda flavor, or do they just adjust the ratio of the 23 flavors oh, so that that one comes out more? My, my favorite is the cherry vanilla. Dr. Pepper, that's good. So is that 25 flavors in the Dr. Pepper? It can be. I, it can be. I, the, the world needs to know. It's been bothering me. So if anybody can like get on that and find out if it's an additional flavor or if those flavors are <laughs> within the original formula, just like modified with some science, some, some beverage science. Beverage um, science. But yeah, we digress. I digress specifically. Uh, we're not here to talk about how great Dr. Pepper is. Uh, we can do that on another stream. Today, uh, Adam and I are both uh, insanely excited to talk about um, Resident Evil 3, the board game. Specifically, the brand new Kickstarters. Uh, Adam, I'm to understand that you've been a naughty boy and you've already looked inside your boxes. Listen, I could not... I Mine showed up on late Friday. Same. Okay? I could not help. Your your weakness has been noted. I had to open it and take a look at the pretty stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. Haven't, I, I, haven't... I haven't unshrinked any cards or anything. I just oh, okay. looked in the box. <clears throat> um, wonderful. So here's the box. And as you all can see, I actually I just undid my, my shrink wrap. So I haven't even looked inside of these. Uh, and I actually, my wife caught me yesterday. Uh, May caught me looking at the Facebook group. Like eyeballing everybody's pretty pictures. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Dr. Pepper podcast. Bye, fans. Four fans. Let's not talk about his twisted sibling, like Theodore Pip. <laughs> uh, couldn't hack it all the way through medical school. Yeah, Yo, it's Cho. Uh, Cho, Lu, Ark, and Sai, uh, Sharky, thirteen thirty-seven. Also joining us in chat. How's everybody doing today? Oh, look at the pretty. Dang. Look at this. This is cool. I love these game trays. Um, I'll tell you what. This isn't the first game I've utilized, uh, I've had that use, uses them. 
um, I play a game called Dice Throne, so, so they use these as well. What's fascinating is um, how, how similar but different it is. Like the shapes of the, and how they clasp to the containers is very different in this one than it is in how Dice Throne does it, which is fine. It's just, you know, careful use of the tech. Um, already though, uh, I'm going to say I'm really thrilled with what I'm seeing. Um, come in, zoom in on the, zoom in on the mini. Come on. So the first thing I'm going to say, which I am so happy about, hard plastic bases. Yes. Hell yeah. That's the first thing I noticed. It doesn't bend. It's um, not, I don't have any bent bases because they're all hard plastic now. Um, Yay. I'll tell you, my first takeaway is I love how everything kind of just like sits in it. You don't have to. So the, I, I don't play my Resident Evil 2 mini my game very much because um, it's, it's finished painted now. And every time I, um, every time I, I go to pull it out, I have to then, I, before I put it away, I retouch all the bases because like pulling them out of the container hurts the bases even if you if you lack of them after a while right so yeah it's a super super nice thing there to have oh, there we go that's fine so uh for some reason i can't get the minis to focus on the camera in any great detail those cards look great cards um, are really nice i'm skipping past all of the multiple choice ones i don't want to spoil anything Oh, um, deck. What's uh? What are these extra slots for? Um, if you look, they are just two of the same trays. Um, oh, so they just have, yeah. So these so are extra, extra spaces. Space. That's neat. It looks not like enough they... to, yeah, not enough to fit every extra mini, unfortunately. But that's not too big. Of a but thing. like, if you get if you're playing the campaign, you unlock a few extra characters. Like, yeah, you can you can put all the characters up in one side and. Ooh, oh baby, yes. Oh man, thank you for following Jacko Spacko. Yo, Jacko Spacko, thank you for follow. Come on, camera, why are you being a jerk to me? I give you nothing but love. Ooh, <clears throat> it's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do do some stuff here. Right. Um, I'm pretty certain there's uh, there's somebody out there on the Facebook group who's found the ideal one. Might have even been Sai. I'm going to adjust my camera. Configure video. And since it won't focus, I want to give it a bit of a zoom. Zoom in. Enhance. This is like CSI. Enhance, 1,000%. That's that better? I might even adjust the focus a bit. Don't get crazy now. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to make it so that you can see the minis. Like, Ultimately speaking, I can pull stuff into focus if the focus is closer. And it allows, like, I want to be able to show pictures of the minis in detail. Right. So, like, I'm just going to set it to focus where I do when we're painting. We will share pictures in the Discord. Absolutely. Sure. In the itchy painty Discord. How's that look, everybody? Uh, it's, it's pretty small on my screen. So, if I can get good enough detail here. Because these are really gorgeous, and I really want to try to highlight that. Wonderful minis. You're holding it right where my camera is, though, Michael. Oh, just oh. A heads up. You are oh, that's because we're screen sharing. I Well, sorry, everybody. All right. Nemesis. Hell yeah. There you go. That's all right. Um, 
Yeah, that's Nemesis. This is the... <laughs> nice. Look who it is. No, uh, really thrilled with the plastic and the... Um, the sculpts are a little more stylized than the last one. Yeah, they came out like um, really nice. They it, it looks it looks good enough that I get it looks like the it, so it doesn't look real, right? It looks like the '90s video game realized, um, which is what I really like. It is a wonderful um, stylistic addition for them to take. I I feel, um, and of course, oh God, this guy is so cool. I can't wait to paint him. He's been the one that I've been like looking at a lot of. Um, yeah, and we're going to be doing him probably last. But there isn't a ton of miniatures, so we shouldn't take us too long to get to right. him. It's... There we go. Um, what else is in here? Uh, I got the dice. Excellent. Uh, I actually bought an extra set of dice. Um, I bought three extra sets of dice. Wow. So nobody at Adam's table has to share. Yeah, uh, that's how I always do it. Nobody shares dice. Wow. What um, if you if your friends roll in some unlucky dice, you don't want any part of that. <laughs> Here's the uh another tray full of zombies. The zombie sculpts look better, like uh just more just they look tighter, not better, I'll say. Yes. There's um, uh there's definitely less variety in this one than there was in two, but if you have two, I mean you can mix and match all those. Yeah, zombies. if you've got two, then you've got all the zombies you'll ever need. Um I'm I'm interested to see what they do with the third one. Uh, I'm hoping that it's like a uh, I'm sorry with the the remake one. Um, I'm thinking I'm uh, um kind of don't know what to think really. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see what they do because like people are gonna have a lot of zombies, so people really aren't gonna want. And the tray comes nicely out. Hey, it's the coolest thing. Bam 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 bam. Right, so there, there's like what I think we talked about it before. There's like four total zombies in um, remake. True, uh, Luigi. You, everybody knows that remake's your favorite game in the series. What's the <laughs> um, what's the over under on that? <clears throat> I think that the um. I think the re the the game the board game might just give us like a few different sculpts of the same zombie maybe so we might get like a little pose variation. So I think what we'll do so I think for the remake you'll have regular sculpts and um, crimson head variants. So like that's how they're gonna pad the mini numbers. For sure, you'll have <laughs> what dogs, crimson head. There's a there's enough stuff hunters. Dogs, crimson um, heads. I can't imagine what potential, uh, like expan I guess the expansion content they they put in the battle horror game or the, like <laughs> the expansion could be like Black Tiger or Neptune. It could be you know any that of would those be could fun. Be expansion. Um, Yawn, Yawn could be an ex yeah. I mean it's it could be an entire boss expansion to be fair. I do love the rule book layout. It's got that wonderful new rule book smell. Hmm. Awesome. So good. The quality of the paper is nice. I love the layout. Um, definitely, definitely incredibly, incredibly hype. I can't. I'm gonna. My uh, wife and I are going to the shore for a couple of days, so we're gonna get to put in. Uh, we're gonna put in so much time playing it. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like, why go to the beach when you can stay here and play the Resident Evil Three board game? Um, <laughs> I'm saying this because I know she's not listening to me. Um, <laughs> we're really not going to play it that much. Mm -mm. The uh, definitely, definitely excited. I'm trying not to get too caught up in in reading the 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 page uh, pages here. I like to read rule books. Um, and that makes me weird. I love this. The That's scenario cool. book is very cool as well. The way you know. The way you unlock scenarios and travel back through them and stuff is just so much fun. <clears throat> I'm very excited to start playing. 
And I think this is going to be more re rewarding for solo players as well. I know there's a lot of people who don't have, like, aren't in an area With... where they have players or they don't have like a, a spouse or a significant other that particularly plays. But this definitely looks because the scenarios are short and pretty quick, and there's like yeah. a map to un you know there's a map to unlock stuff and mm. collect items. I think that definitely sort of aims better for a solo player. So the, to kind of do to that to that end and to that point, I I want to touch on that as well. Um, one of the things I, I like about this game is they didn't really complicate the the game design in an, any in an extremely crazy way. They didn't make anything more difficult or harder. They just added a couple new, like, plates to twirl, right? So you got to keep it all up in the air without it falling apart. And they added this, like, long-term goal. And so you're not just playing through the video game. You, it, you know what I mean? It's the, there's, an, there's an overall goal to the game, which kind of pulls people along right. as well. It's not just, it's not just like, mm -hmm. 20 scenarios. Um, the, it, the extra... a living map, yeah. The extra... Um, the extra mechanics they added the the barrels like the new characters and how like i i, I think it's gonna it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun um i know it's gonna be a lot of fun uh i, I play i played quite a bit of it um already not now but ha i can actually point this out here's why i played quite a bit of it you're in the rule book i'm in the rule book your name Ta -da. Is in there. Right there. Um, that's me. There's me. Haha, -ha, right there. Oh, and look who it is. And look who it is. Oh, I like that thing too. Actually, no. I know most of the playtesters here. <laughs> um, that's funny. I'll have to point that out to Sherwin. <clears throat> oh. Um, that's okay. Um, I, do, I always do appreciate Steamforce does this really great. At the back of every other rule books is the quick reference sheet, which is always helpful because who the hell wants to uh, go through a rule book again? Um, <clears throat> going past the two scenario books, which are absolutely fantastic, uh, we do have the cards, which we saw Adam go through earlier. Uh, I'm I'm not going to... We don't need to go through all the cards. There's, I mean, most of the cards will contain, like, spoilers. So right. we're not going to open them up and go through every card. All right, yeah. So, and here we have the piece of resistances. Um, I'm going to actually put, uh, we have the most important feature on this, the Kickstarter name list. We're going to go through, we're going to try to find Burger's name. So while... Are you going to read out everybody's name? No, I'm not going to read out everybody's name. Don't be ridiculous. Um, but <laughs> while you're doing your unboxing... I want to point out the names of everybody who's in chat. Boom. Give me big give me big camera. Adam Boost! Boost! <laughs> I am going to be unboxing The Last Escape. The Last Escapade. Wow, this is really small. Beautiful. Little Look at that. Artwork on the book here. That's also original concept art for the board game. I was going to say, original art, which is so nice to see. All right, here we go. I'm on... So pretty. M-A-M-R. M-A. Haha, -ha, Michael. I won't, I won't ruin the inside of this book again, but like, it's full of original art. This is a beautiful vignette right here of just a dilapidated street. It's really, really nice. Fact, yeah. it might even be cut out. And then just showing the contents here. So this is the uh, last escape. So you have Barry Burton, Tyrell, Brad, Advanced Tyrell, Marvin, Dario, and Murphy. You also have Brain Suckers, Giant Spiders, and Hey, Frozen. there I am. Hey -o. Michael James Early. There's also a Michael James Taylor. <laughs> There's rules for adding um, new enemies, new characters, how to add new events and narratives. There is a special tile in this in this set as well, which is used in like one-off little scenarios. Um, I believe, just from what I've read, your character can end up on that tile alone outside of the scenario, and you kind of have to deal with like Nemesis or the Grave Digger or whatever. So that's super cool. So there's the tile there. Let me see. So that was me. 
There's the yeah, grave know. digger tile here. Very, very nice. It's now, cool. if you've got the Resident Evil 2 game, we know the, the debacle over the uh, the dark tiles, and they were definitely too dark, but these ones are beautiful. They're gorgeous. Oh, Look my goodness. Perfect. Dead like, factor, I think this is. Or... Very, very nice. Absolutely. Um, big fan. Hey, let's take a look at some of these minis. A -M. Get into this. Let's see if we can't find that beautiful Brad Vickers. Show me that beautiful okay. bean footage. Start here. Who are these two guys? Okay, so here we have. I don't know if this is a good shot for you guys or if it's too exposed. Let me see if I can mess with my light real quick. Might be better for you. Oh, I found Adam too. Adam Reeves. I'm there, baby. Hell yeah. Tyrell. Tyrell Patrick. Yo. Very nice. Great detail here. I don't know if you can see, but the umbrella symbol in his back is is all indented in there. And he has all his pouches and his glasses are, are very finely molded there. That's freaking awesome. And then we've got classic Marvin Branagh. Mine has a little flash on and a little mold release as well. There's a little yellow patch here on his leg, but that is just I mean, you can, where he came out of the mold, and that's not a big problem. You can just rinse that. I wash all my minis before yep. I them anyway. Okay. Advanced Tyrell, I think this is, or regular Tyrell. One of them is advanced, one of them is regular. I think this is regular, maybe, because the advanced one is pointing his gun, potentially. <clears throat> very, very nice. Yeah. Dario, the great novelist. Just leave me wonderful, alone. Wonderful sculpts on here as Just well. Just get away from me. Dario. You, oh, Dario, you old so-and-so. And himself. I'm so happy for this Brad Vickers. It's such a nicer sculpt than the first game where he kind of looks a little scared. Well, I mean, they, what's his nickname, Adam? I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Does anybody know Brad Vickers' nickname? Yeah, it's Lionheart. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure that that's what it is? Can yeah. There it is. Lankenstein in chat knows it because it's true. Yeah, it is true. Have you ever seen have you ever seen what happens when Link attacks chickens? They go effing crazy because they got the hearts of warriors. <laughs> Sorry. I just took a drink of water and uh, that amazing joke was so funny that I, I snorted it a little bit. <laughs> Murphy Seeker here, really nice sculpt. I love the sculpts that they've gone for on these guys. Yeah. They're, they're very unique. They're not just like, I'm holding my gun and shooting it. And what's this one that uh, that you opened up? This was uh, the last, the last escape. escape. Yeah. Okay. And here is good old Barry Burton. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm actually going to leave these, um, these trays out for these tiles for no reason at all, anybody. <laughs> no um we're gonna do some beautification so i'm gonna have my tiles out so that we can do some of that um but i needed to clear some space off the table yeah uh, and then i'm gonna show you the the monsters and then we are done with the last escape right. so we have um, two spiders very similar to the resident evil 2 ones they do look nicer but, though they're tighter but yeah nicer definitely more <laughs> clean lines obviously the hard base is just a game changer for me Oh. Um, it gives them a bit more heft as well, the hard base. So they'll just sit nicer on the board. Uh, I also want to point out a small little reference as well. Is the cardboard on the um, the box feels nicer than in the one on Resident Evil 2. It feels a little thicker. Not by a lot, but just like yeah. like just enough. That, cause it's picking up both of them. The, the, the Resident Evil 2 box kind of collapses a bit. Hit. Brain suckers are very nice. Very creepy. Uh, move these off to the side. And then I'll just show you the crow real quick. I think they're pretty much four of the same sculpt, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but really nice crow sculpt, yeah. Nicer than yep. the Resident Evil 2 ones again, I think. A bit more tighter, not as big, not as overhanging the base. Yeah, no, I, I really it's, dig them. The zombie's not hanging off either end of the base as well. It, really, really nice. I like it. Really <laughs> beautiful. So that's Last Escape. Did you want to do the... um? 
the City of Ruin or the... You feel free to get into City of Ruin okay. and then I'll do... Retro the pack? Or the... I don't have the retro pack yet. I do have oh. it coming. Uh, all right. Then after the Kickstarter exclusives, I'll do the retro pack. Sure. We knew this wasn't going to take that long. Well, we've got stuff to, to show people yeah. as well. So. Um, so that's why so that's why I mentioned that. So we are going to do some of our beautification tips. Um, I actually have my laminator handy, my Hello. my giant Sharpie, and my dimensional magic, which I've never actually used before. Uh, oh, so I'm interested to see how it works. It's um, real easy. We'll get there. I'm so excited. Ooh, hello. So this is City of Ruin. No names on the inside of this box. Um, Feel free to jump your uh, oh, screen up big. I knocked my I knocked my keyboard down, so I have to go get it and put Ooh. its batteries back in and turn it back on and reset <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, well, do you need it, or are you good? No, I'm good. I'm actually just switching it over now. Okay, I was gonna uh, say I can jump into the train pack if you want. Ha ha! Here we are. <clears throat> seeing the retail boxing for these yeah i really like the box design uh i like that it's understated um, i like that the back has like fluff on it rather than having pictures yeah and stuff because obviously we all knew what we were getting exactly uh and the so rule book will tell you what it is uh, yeah i don't think i've pointed that out yet but that's the back of the box um it's gorgeous it looks nice on the shelf but uh, again, I, li I like that in box design. Like one of my favorite. No, I don't have it up here. But there's a, a board game I just I only have because I really like the box jumped out at me. Uh, never actually played it, and that's like the meme of my household. <laughs> it's like I always bring it for board game night, never get to because like I only bought it because I thought the box was cool. Uh, so here's the City of Ruin. We have an additional a supplementary rule book. It looks like. Um, which will extend out the campaign structure, gives us larger bosses. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I just remembered something from the Kickstarter. Fuck this book. Um, oh, hey. This is a nice, look at this big boss title. Look at this. Holy crap. There's additional icons on it, too. Oh, that's the laser, and it shoots across. Wow. You know, it's fascinating because I saw this, t like you see this in, in a game, in the game in 1990, in 1998, this is a thing. And it's like, wow, that's so high tech for, for technology. I can't believe they could fit all that in a single room. And then you do the remake, which, um, which is the same, ostensibly the same time period. And she picks up like a handheld laser cannon. She just picks it up. Yeah. Just picks it up. That's why I I, uh, I like remake, but I like remake like I like RoboCop. <clears throat> Some additional tokens. Uh, yeah. So as I pointed out, it makes no sense. <laughs> Sound enough power to activate the system. Uh, really the cool. Good and thing is, it doesn't have to make too much sense. The other side I, is the graveyard. It looks like. Is that correct? No. What is this area? Uh, the other side should be for the digger fight. Okay. I think. Awesome. Some additional tiles. Are these supplementary or just reprints of other ones? God, the tile art is so good. Yeah, Man. It's beautiful. The tile art is phenomenal in this. Like, it's very. It's like art. <laughs> it's truly like art. All right. Thank they, you they to. They did a fantastic uh, job. Sai for pointing out that that was the park. Yeah. Isn't there an area where you're in the graveyard and you have to deal with the worm? Or am I thinking of a different um, it, game? It's the it's like the smaller fight for it, I think. Okay. I think that's the piece you get in the Yo, in the I fucking, escape. How crazy is it that I just recognize the specifically this stairwell area? I can't wait to play that level. Ooh wee! Everybody, I'm so excited for this. Right, uh, so Sharky pointed out, Operation introduced cloaking tech for the same time period. <laughs> oh, Adam! Adam! Look at the big boy. Look at the big boy. How cool is he? 
He's so wormy. I hey. love the hunters as well. Look at the brain. Look at it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Yo. Truly the fate of almost any Resident Evil creature. Turn into a dog at the end. <laughs> Turn into some kind of dog. Some bipedal. Yo, it's really like uh, Adam over here with the, the deep village lore. <laughs> this nemesis model gives you concern. Frog boys. You want to see the frog boys? Frogos. So I'm very excited to paint the frogos. I, I've decided I'm going to paint mine uh, and maybe even re do some some green stuff work on one of them to make a um, uh, remake frog boys. Ooh, big remake frog boys. Big remake frog boy. Just as one, just to have like representation. Uh, I was just yeah, thinking of ways that idea. we could differentiate our, our paintings. Uh, and that was one of the ways I thought of in terms of like future content as, as we're painting stuff. So we're not painting the same thing the same way. I could, right. I could like do my characters in the, uh, remake style, uh, more additional cards. I even like that the, the art on the back of the tension cards is almost exactly the same, but it's, it is brighter as well. The whole game generally is just like mm -hmm. turn up that brightness just a smidge and it does wonders for it. Uh, I'm actually going to crack open these item cards. <clears throat> Potential spoiler warning, guys. <laughs> Potential spoiler warning for... Uh, I'm actually going to look at them. I just want to feel them, see if they're thicker than the last one. That was one of my only... Um, when I think about complaints for Resident Evil 2, the board game, I get really nitpicky. But like, I recognize that it's nitpicky. Um, I just wanted to test the uh, the thickness of the cards. And they're a little... They, they feel a little, a th little thicker. They're less glossy, which I appreciate. Uh, it definitely makes filming them for uh, potential streaming... Uh, reasons def a little easier to, to manage. Um, I do love the art on the cards. <clears throat> did I pull this? Did I pull the big big boy out yet? I don't know that I did. Bang! Not the not the digger. No. Look at him. Oh, I love yeah, this mini. Got, uh, the tiles are super good. Uh, I love this miniature dude. Who who in the chat is still waiting on theirs? Does so everybody have theirs? Yeah. I think Sharky's is coming on Friday. <clears throat> From what Facebook has let me ascertain. You All are right. not gonna be disappointed, Sharky, I promise you. Nah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild. Uh, I can't wait to play it. Joe got, got his, his yesterday. yesterday. Nice. There we go. I'm actually gonna pop these tiles out. Also, one of my favorite additions are these things. Uh, just as a little like way to use the extra board space, so that way you can differ, you can label your rooms during setup. Super, super <laughs> genius. That's the one. One of the things that bothered me in the in Resident Evil Two, the board game, was remembering what what was what, what was green, uh, what was green, what was yellow, what was orange, what was red, what had been discovered. And now you can just put those tokens, and once they're done, you just you take just the token off, and you're yep. done. It's great. It allows you to keep your focus on like how much the um, like you can get. You can get a sense. But you get to the end of a mission, and you roll that d6, and you know what you're going to get at that point. Right. You've seen how much you've cleared, and it's just good. Like the less you have to take your eyes off the actual game, the better. Yeah. Agreed. Know. Definitely agreed. Katie, he's still waiting on his. Oh, oh no! Dang. Oh no! It's on the wrong ship. I'm gonna try not to sound too smug about that. I'm sorry. It's funny because I'm I'm so used to being like the log. I, I I don't know if it's just my luck, but I generally get things later than everybody like, else. Super late compared to. Oh. Well, he said he didn't back due to monies. Well, the good thing about this one is there's not a whole ton of Kickstarter mm -mm. exclusives that you that you miss out on. Um, and, I mean, if I were you, I'd keep my eyes on Steam Forge Games websites because they always sell what extra the exclusive ones? packs. And really, all you want to get is the one box of character exclusives. You don't need the extra monsters mm -hmm. or anything like that. I feel like any time a publisher says it's a Kickstarter exclusive, it just means that they're not going to reprint it. Right. Because generally speaking, you can you can sometimes get it, um, but if right. it, if it, people go crazy for a game, um, you know, not unlike like any of the 
what do we call them? Simon games. Cause yeah, they... call, call me or not is, can be tough sometimes because they have such a big player base. I know a buddy who sold his Rising Sun playmat for like three hundred dollars. <laughs> it's it's always a good idea to buy the things that don't seem popular in the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. If there's, um, like if there's... They, sorry, go ahead. During during the Eternal Darkness or whatever it's called, the uh, Massive Darkness, um, call me or not, mm-hmm. they did a box of these four elemental creatures that kind of nobody bought and now you can sell them for like hundreds of dollars because nobody bought them and now everybody everybody's like oh this massive darkness game is really cool right or like oh i i bought it all but i didn't get that now i want that or whatever so can't wait to put these all on the shelf right next to each other uh it's good that's it's unfortunately going to take resident evil 2 spot on the shelf um resident evil 2 is going to get demoted to the basement i just say get more shelf Get more shelf. <laughs> Put um, up an extra shelf. Uh, I I do and did already, but I have to put my <laughs> I have to put my cool nerd shit somewhere, and that requires shelf space too, Adam. Like Resident Evil needs to understand that I'm a multi-game man, and they can't just keep me down this way. Boo. <laughs> Buy a new house. Yeah, that's right, Luigi. Right, it's super duper easy. Um, what do you got coming up next? Is this the terrain pack? I have terrain. I just have a, a big. Actually, I just pulled stuff out, and I'm gonna go through it. Here it is. There you go, bud. <clears throat> okay, terrain pack. This is an optional extra, so technically kind of like pimping out your game, but always really useful. A lot easier to see like open doors and closed doors compared to the tokens. That's a nice dimensionality to your game, I find. Right, exactly. So we have explosive barrels, of course. It wouldn't be Resident Evil 3 without explosive barrels. These do have a couple of mold lines on them, but it's a train piece and it's a board game piece, so it's not a big deal. But we, right. can, just, we can just take the back of our exacto knife and just run that up and down, and it will remove that line. Mm-mm. So it's not too big of a deal. We, we'll do. I'll do that in my own time. For the right. Year. I, I love the stair pieces. Like, I love the three different stairs as well. You get like a, a concrete stair, you get an, a kind of like factory type stair, and then you also get uh, an elevator or a lift if you're in England. Um, very very. Neither cool of us are in England, pieces. so call it what it is. Well, I I am English though, so I would call it a lift. You don't count anymore though. <laughs> you're one of us now. Well, I'm one of us. So wow. there was one one thing I had a bit of a problem with here, and these are these open archways. <laughs> um, yeah. And I understand why they did it, um, because it was easy to basically these doors um, just are sitting in these archways. Yeah. Now, I've clipped mine off already, but you can see this little white a, circle down there's here. There's a nubbin. There's a large peg that the door goes onto, and it doesn't look great just for like an open door. So I say just get a pair of clippers or a knife and snip it, shave those off, and then you're good to go. These little wood and um, door rubble piles are super nice. Are these just walls? Uh, these are just little rubble piles to um, block areas, and then these are the walls here. I do like the walls. And the walls have an angled edge to them as well, which is really nice, so that if you take two walls and you want to put them up against each other, you do have um, you do have an angled edge that sits with an angled edge like that, <laughs> so that it gives you a proper corner. Now, I'm noticing the, the corpse tokens are the same again. The corpse um, tokens are the same, but they are sturdier. They're they're again again tighter too. Like yeah. that's that's the, the big takeaway I'm getting from a lot of these is like they just they look tighter. Yeah, the the ink um, ribbon sculpt uh, and the typewriter I believe are the same sculpts as well. But again, harder plastic, just yeah. a little more more detail, a little little tighter, a little cleaner, a little crisper, like less warpy. No, I'm I'm here um, for it. I'm actually and, glad I never painted them. Right, and the same with the item box. Yeah, and I'm so glad that in the item box in this game. It does carry over. Like you can yes! put items in it and then open it in another location. That's super cool. It actually gives it like a good use. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you've got a few different types of doors. There's more than these two that I'm holding here, but 
They're all the same from the previous they are, game as they well. They are from Game Assets, which is nice. So they are like official Resident Evil doors. Um, wonderful. Again, again, tighter too. Like I, I definitely yeah. only painted a handful of my doors. Uh, so I'll probably paint these like on the stream. Yeah, I'm. I will. I, I mean, everything is going to be painted from the box. Yeah. So every me, every mini like, is like, going to be painted. So I'm going to go through every one. Yeah. And we're probably able to, like do a lot of it together on stream. Uh, and the yes. goal, of course, is to encourage all of you who are watching, um, lift haters. <laughs> um, that's funny, Joe. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So paint it along, doing using step by step, you know, processes as we go, and you know, if you if you join us and paint along, by the time you're done, at the very least, we'll do every mini that's in the core box, so at least your core set will be completely painted. But I'll, I'll promise you this much, and Sai can attest to this. This is kind of how we like. Once you start, you're gonna want to keep going. Um, so by the time we're done, you'll probably be done as well. Uh, is there anything else to open? You have the Kickstarter minis, right? I have the Kickstarter exclusives. I didn't get the extra monsters, but they're just more more of the same. Okay. Here we uh, go. These are the goods. This is what I'm excited about, because these are the fun ones. So, we have Disco Jill in her Disco Pantsuit. That's Kiryu Cosmo outfit. Very excited. This is a white suit, so this is going to be a fun one to paint. Uh, I'm, I'm painting her like Kiryu Cosmo. Uh, green men, we are going to be starting on zombies. Just yeah. because that's what we do. Um, yeah, we're going to basically start from the ground up uh, and do the entire color theory. Uh, yeah. Separating your colors, stuff like that. So we'll start with the zombies and then the, U, the UBCS soldiers might all be one... Because they're wearing the same. Right, that'd they be one be episode. A, they for... might be one on themselves. So the the police. This is actually one of my favorites here. The police, Jill, um, in her like street patrol uniform, outfit. as it were, her patrol yeah. outfit. I like that one too. It's going to be fun to paint. Very cool. Uh, very cool here. Nikolai with his arms crossed. Uh, he has a little bit of flash on him. Um, a little mold line over his head that I'm going to have to clear up. That's not a problem. Yeah, very, very cool. Great pose. Got his head tilted upwards. Looks slightly aloof there. So that is the awesome. Dice can confirm dice perfectly balanced. <laughs> okay, the advanced Carlos here, who is um, taking aim with the pistol. A bit more of an action pose. The one we all want to paint, Barry Burton. This one's a little odd. His scale is a little weird. He's shorter than Disco Jill. So I think part of that's... Because if you also look, they, I think they had a different sculptor do him. Potentially, yeah. Than, than the other Barry. Uh, so that's why he's he appears a little differently. He's just a tiny little bit smaller. But yeah. he's got the hand cannon, and he is a very, very nice sculpt. He really is. So, I, I'm a big fan of him. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, and oh, Sherwin's jumped into the uh, the live audio here on Discord. Sherwin, if you want to talk and talk us through some of this, you are more than welcome. Yeah, I thought I'd just crash a little bit, you know. Hey, hey Sherwin! Hello. How you doing, bud? I'm not doing too bad, thanks. I just quickly check my uh, my stuff to make sure I'm actually outputting a correct voice and stuff. Yeah, you I'm not doing too bad, thanks. Me. Super, super busy with work and stuff, but that's I'm good. I'm sure. Uh, um, dude, this is all beautiful, by the way. I have we have I, been drooling over it. Absolutely thrilled. Just to just to point out, like again, the, the tiles. I can't get over them, man. The the tiles are such a such a massive improvement. Oh, cool. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, the I, art I, is is stunning. Yeah, that's that's Doug Doug Telford, our uh, our in house artist. I knew when we uh, we couldn't get him for the first RE, he was working on, what was he working on? One of our other projects at the time. And I desperately wanted to get him on board. And for RE3, I managed to corral uh, him into working on it for us. And we therefore got all sorts of special stuff happening as a result. He somehow takes stuff and makes it even more scary. 
Um, yeah. I have no idea how. Like, um, I, I mean, this this stuff has buckets of atmosphere. I mean, just loads of it. Well, that's actually yeah. The tile stuff is um, tiles is actually a guy called Reese Pugh. Uh, Doug did all of the item and all of the uh, oh, okay. animal stuff. Uh, so that that's the same guy who did RE too. Um, just yeah, Reese Writer. is Reese is incredible. He knows just, he really knows his stuff. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The way he makes it is he actually makes like a um, I think he uses Unreal actually. He makes like a three D image of the thing oh. and then top downs it and then yep. does it that way. That's wow. really really cool. Really cool. Um, it's super cool because I kind of like I remember him making stuff and I'm like, can I? Can I just geek out a bit and kind of have you walk <laughs> me through the RPD? Because he rebuilt the RPD station. I'm like, please do that. That's so awesome. And he kind of, he's very long suffering. He kind of said, yeah, that's cool. You do that. Um, and laughed at me. <laughs> so, when are you making the 3D station for yourself, Sherwin? Uh, well, I mean, I've obviously got that 3D printing now. It's just huge. So, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> um, gorgeous. Art. Really, really great stuff, dude. Uh, I'm very, very excited. I can't wait to start very, playing it. Very happy that the, the mini seem to have a, like a hard plastic base now showing. Um, that yeah. Like a... That was the other thing I wanted to comment on, too. I, I really like the uh, the minis feel a little tighter than on, than Resident oh. Evil 2. Um, they got a bit more heft to them because of the base, which is really um, nice. Now, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I get the impression, and, and I could be incorrect here, um, but you y'all, it seems like y'all might have gotten a little more artistic space. With Resident Evil Three in comparison to Resident Evil Two, um, you know, you know, this is the part where I should probably check anyone from Capcom's listening. But uh, um, <laughs> so one of the really interesting, one of the really interesting things. I mean, yeah. So, so first of all, Capcom are amazing to work with, and yeah. um, they are super fun. And I think the biggest part we had with this project um, was purely like the first time we worked with them. It was our first Capcom project, mm. so. As you'd expect, there's a degree of kind of um, scrutiny uh, that perhaps we didn't necessarily have to worry about for mm. RE3 because we'd already worked one with, on the project with them once. We kind of knew them all on you know, first name per terms and stuff. They're super nice guys. Um, and at that point, they're kind of a bit more like, yeah, you guys know what you're doing. We'll just let you get on with things. And you still have approvals and stuff. But right. the approval process was so much faster for RE3 than RE2 because at that point, we'd worked out how um you know how they liked things to be submitted they'd worked out kind of the level of detailing that they wanted to get to and we'd already had a lot of conversations one of the big ones about re miniatures uh, versus a lot of other stuff in the market is uh, re miniatures are all true scale they're yeah. not kind of heroic scale with the giant right. heads and mm -hmm. hands and that i remember that was a early conversation with capcom when we kind of fired over our first models to them and they went well their heads are too big and at that point we had to kind of sit down and, and really deep dive into why they, yeah, why miniatures are made the way they are, and the eventual decision that Capcom made was that's great, but we want them to be realistic. So right. that's what got to. Do you think that with Resident Evil Two being a success, that it, it kind of let? Do you think that's why it maybe went faster this time? And do absolutely. You, do you foresee that? Obviously, we had um, in the box we had a teaser for the for Resident Evil One. Um, wait, Resident Evil One. What? Yeah, really? I, is that what this um, is? Is that what this is right here? <laughs> I'm not entirely certain. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's. I can already tell you the approval process is is much faster, mostly right. on the basis that again, again, we know how Capcom like to work now, and yeah. you know, obviously we've got up a big trust with them, and and so on. And it's awesome. So, so yeah, it's our RE three and RE. It, it's coming along. It's good. It's good. Um, I mean, this just looks like a smash hit, honestly, Sherwin. I, I'm i completely in love with the campaign rule set. The, oh, yeah. the backtracking, the unlocking, the map that you kind of keep going. It's just phenomenal. It's, like, so exciting. So far, my favorite part of all of this has been the, the dice tube. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love the dice tube. So, uh, so, so to see behind the scenes, the dice cube came to us. We were in Reno. We we're actually in the uh, in the place where, in the land where you guys are. Yeah. Uh, we we're in the states oh, at the time. We, yeah. we, yeah, we were at um, a trade show called Gamma. Oh, I love and, Gamma. Uh, we, Great time. Yeah, and and we just uh, we just come back from the Gears of War show we did in uh, Mexico, uh, Matt and I, and I had a terrifying drive to get to Reno. We we cra we got down to. Um, we came from Mexico. We landed in um, we landed in uh, San Francisco, possibly one of the worst airports I've ever been <laughs> in to the in my world. Life. Yeah, 
it was awful. And um, anyway, but they managed to lose my luggage and everything. It was oh bad. my gosh! Anyway, so so we we kind of we got out of there, and then we drove across um, to Reno. And, That's a hell um, of a drive, man. Yeah, right. And um, so Matt, being Matt, my boss, yeah, he could have got a sensible car, but he's like, no, I want a Dodge. So we find ourselves <laughs> in this this ridiculous American muscle car. Uh, just driving across the land and it's like super late at night because my luggage got lost and I had to go find it and stuff and we like drove through like you drive through the mountains and stuff to get there right and it's and it's super icy mm. and yeah we couldn't find anything that we agreed on music wise on the radio and we ended up with like this sort of <laughs> proper power metal stuff going on it was like the 80s was reborn um, oh, yeah. and uh, and we're driving along and it, it, I'm kind of drifting off it's super late I've not really got much sleep on the plane or anything and I realized I sort of wake up and like I could feel the back of the car just sliding out around us as we go around and start as we go around the corners and stuff. <laughs> I'm looking out I'm looking out the windows and seeing these sheer drops. I'm like, Matt, I, have you got full control of the car? He's like, not really. <laughs> it's the most terrifying drive I've ever had in my entire life. Quite fun in its own way, I guess. Yeah, going over. You can Sierra imagine like, that power, with that kind of power metal kind of wailing, like, what? Yeah, it's a sort of wailing over the radio <laughs> as we go sliding around this mountain but yeah no it's cool um but yeah we we got to reno and uh, we were chatting about what we could do for various different things and uh and the dice and and the dice file came up then um so our commercial director toby kind of came up with this idea and uh, thought it was awesome and went from there really nah i dig but it anyway i'm i'm totally you know ruining your unboxing no I'm, well, I'm you're, you're hey, not ruining anything you guys are doing. um we're, we 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 did the we're just going over how cool the minis are and and hanging out with our friend Sherwin at this point. Um, yeah, fair enough. Well, I can't <laughs> promise you'll have me for the entire thing, but I thought I'd stop by briefly. Nah, you guys are online. Appreciate any it. opportunity. Yeah. Um, the reception has been reception has been positive per per the online chatter at the very least that I see. People seem to be really mm, enjoying the game. Positive. Really, really good. <laughs> I'm pleased. I mean, it's. Releasing games is always a slightly nervous thing, right? Because right. a lot of the time, especially especially now in sort of pandemic feel, that you don't. I, I haven't actually had a copy of RE3 in my hands uh, to actually look at. I didn't get mine until people started receiving theirs, um, mm -hmm. so I didn't actually get to really look through a lot of the assets. But yeah, uh, some of the st like the stuff when I actually got mine, I started looking through. I was blown away by how much and i'm not taking any credit for this it's absolutely right. down to our awesome production guys they really managed to get the sharpness of the miniatures especially jumped out on me they're really really yo good. that's was really, the really first nice. thing we are very excited as painters to to get mm. cracked off of those obviously um yeah. in fact that's actually i'm gonna pull this monster box back out and i want to draw special attention to one of the zombie sculpts just because it struck me um <laughs> you might have the uh the, there's a there's a story to one of them that you might be about to point out to me uh, which one is easy? This one? Yeah, it's this guy. Um, it's come on the screen. <clears throat> I'm like, just showing up. The I level of detail my... on the on this guy's back here. Mm. Um, I don't know if you. I, I'm not streaming into the Discord, unfortunately. Uh, the the programs don't allow it. But if you're looking at it on Twitch, um, I got it up on my camera. But he's got he's got the thriller pose going on. Yeah. Uh. Uh, uh, the, yeah, I, okay. I was struck by how like how tight the detail on the back of his shirt was. Um, yeah, they're um, yeah. I think uh, we just really managed to get a whole bunch of different details coming up. Is this the uh, one that has the story? Now, awesome. This guy's no, got, like, claw no, no. Marks. The, 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 the story is the guy who's missing an arm. He's actually got a face mask on, right? Uh, as you'll see around his neck. Yeah. Oh, and, dip, and yeah. That's and that's but the reason why is because originally he was going to be an RE one zombie uh, in the labs. Um, and then we kind of went, you know what, let's, you yeah, know, we need some, you yeah, know, we're switching path to, we're looking at other stuff and we kind of went, okay, so let's make him like a more of a city zombie. And then we, <laughs> we basically made the version of it without the mask and then basically, um, and then basically went from there, like removed that from the layer and everything else, went for approvals and everything else. And at some point, like that particular file with like the mask still attached managed to go through to like sculpt <laughs> go through to manufacturing and stuff and it's like okay well now this thing has the mask and then like the pandemic hit and we're like you know what i can't think of a more of a better time to accidentally leave a face mask on a model than, right. than literally now so like, as a result it kind of stayed and we didn't really feel that bad about leaving it on to be honest. i appreciate that he's wearing a mask and he didn't have a jaw to use it right exactly like, this, right. Bravo. This even the zombies now it's real 
social he's, distancing. He's, fo he's, fo he's following the rules. I mean, they're not great at social distancing, I imagine. Right. That is yeah. one thing that zombies are not good at. But, uh, yeah. Excuse me. It's my personal space. <laughs> Um, no, but, I absolutely yeah, love Back these. to the miniatures, they're, they're awesome. They're, um, I'm really blown away by the stuff that production managed to get out of it because, mm. you know, it's our sculpting team is phenomenal, phenomenal, and normally what happens is that they're phenomenal to the point where, like, uh, the people we work with, uh, like the manufacturing partners, are really sort of struggling to display all the details they throw into them. So I think we've really got it mm. right on this one. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the UBCS guys have, like, the umbrella patch on the back of the jackets, and... Yeah. That's like, wild. Yeah, we, we went through quite a lot to make sure that stuff was correct. Yeah, yeah like, on, on, like, Brad's shoulder, you've got the stars badge, which is just insane. Yep. I, yeah. I don't Brad, think, Brad is, like, Brad is like, I think, one of my favorite models from the RE3. Thank you. I, yeah, I think he's yeah, really... He's definitely got a lot of character in that skull. I've got him right here. He's beautiful. He's dynamic. He carries, he conveys Brad, but also still being somewhat heroic, which is what I like. Brad, Brad's not the heroic guy. one. Oh, poor Brad. Yeah. I know. If only he hadn't run away. Then everyone. Well, this is the point. You, you, can, you can make that different. Right. You can turn him around. You can keep him going. Right? Alternate histories. There's, there's uh, Sherwin's boy, Mr. Mr. Barry Burton. Uh, I, that model I'm desperately in love with. Um, yeah, me too. I, I, I felt so happy that model makes me. Um, um, his freaking Magnum, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, I think. Um, I mean, one of the most interesting parts for me, the most awesome parts about the game is so far is watching everyone's stories. Like everyone's saying, "Oh man, you know, like I had to leave Dario in RPD because you know, we, you know, Nemesis was coming after us and I couldn't do it." Or, Oh, I had to run into the burning building and I saved like, you know, I kind of saved Taro or whatever. That stuff's cool. Like I'm, yeah. I'm loving that, that element of things and it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do, which is we wanted it. So when people play the campaign, every single run through is different. Every single time you sit there to play it, it's right. just like, it's a yeah, real you're, experience. You're crafting a story. One of my, one of my favorite things, uh, talking about the, the Facebook, the original board game Facebook community has always been about that community. It's not just like, not only seeing like people do their stories, but like, seeing this the other like the new stories and the new stuff people create like mm. i love people being like so what would what would this character be like in resident evil 2 there's the one he's always printing like uh like ash from the evil dead and he's like hey let's make a character for ash from the evil dead <laughs> yeah yeah that's um, cool i i i think um yeah I, I i love it i mean the community for i i say this a lot, but it's it's ne I've never meant it more sincerely. Each time I say it, increasingly, is the RE community we have is phenomenal. Yeah, like that. I've never known another. You know, there's there's a couple of people, but, but <laughs> I've never I've never known such an overwhelmingly positive and just yeah wonderful and devoted fan base as what this game has. As it's a so, yeah, it's incredible. Absolutely. Everyone just seems so keen on it. It's it's um, really refreshing to go to that page, you know, the Facebook page, and not not be hit by a wall of like even like when it was coming, no one was complaining really. Everyone was just like following the ships and stuff. There was very little of like people being like, "Oh, it's been however long." Or yeah. Or, hey, it's try my there. try my Resident Evil One scenarios. Um, <laughs> So the other thing I want to talk about too, just in terms of how this how this board game looks to me, um, one of the things that always strikes me uh, most is how 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 a board game looks on a shelf, and I really appreciate the high like the the understated nature of the um, the design. Like I, I love it so much. We were talking earlier how it's nice that there's the the fluff that's on the back as opposed to a description yeah. of the rules, because like you kickstarted Resident Evil through the board game, you know what you're getting out of it. You don't need to be sold it already. Um, yeah, exactly. We, we kind of had a chat about what to do with it. And obviously these are limited edition boxes. So we went, yeah, what well, do we really want to make these things into, into sales pitches? Cause ultimately the back of a box is just completely dead. Right. Right. Like it's something which exists because you know, you don't want to pick it up in a store, flip it over and you want to have some indication of what's on there and right. a bit of a sales pitch power. Awesome. It is the point where someone's got the Kickstarter limited edition box. They've already kind of bought into it. They've already kind of, and I don't mean that to sound mercenary in the sort of, you know, you don't need to sell to them anymore. It's more so right. much, it's more so much, these are people who know what there is, this thing is, they're really into it. They they are part of the, 
yeah, they're part of the Cool Kids Club where they're kind of already they know what Resident Evil is. They're really excited about it, hyped about it. They the last thing you really want to do is sort of show off the show to those people or anything else. You want to make this box feel like, yeah, you're one of the cool kids. You you were yeah. here for the start. Uh, and, and I think good. that's that's the thing yeah, we wanted. KDB it sets a tone. Cool <laughs> Sorry? A... Cool I was just off. telling Mr. KDB that he's not a cool kid. He's not, he's going to get it on retail. Cause... He's pretty cool. He's, he's okay. Cool. But he's not part of the cool club. <laughs> Um, no, I'm kidding. He's a, he's definitely part of the cool club, but he he didn't back it, so um, he uh, he is going to pick it up at retail. Can you t- talk a, at all about what the box art is going to look like for that, or is that a secret? Uh, it's you no, know, it's it's not dissimilar to um, to RE2 actually. It's uh, it's 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 kind of got much more of a it, it's almost like obviously like night and day when you look at consider that the rari 3 box is kind of all you know the limited edition one is obviously black and so on yeah the, the one for this is takes much more of a cue from a cue from re2 we okay. looked at lots of different box art for what re3 looked like in various different regions and so on but a lot of the imagery they use just isn't high res enough for us to actually use um and a lot of it also didn't really jump out um also didn't really jump out very well uh, when it came to kind of um sitting on a shelf if that makes sense yeah. one of the big presences that re2 has um in stores is the fact that it's a white box everyone else chooses black sure. boxes. For sure. so it, it immediately stands out with a big stark writing on the side and we kind of wanted to continue that on um, uh, so, it, makes, it definitely makes so, sense because it's uh, all continu- continuing from each other the, uh, i'm actually just now going through and, and looking at the rule book for um the the last escape box and we mentioned this earlier sherwin but there's so much like to add in this tiny ass box like when you the size of this box versus the amount of game content you have this this rule book is as heavy as the main rule book um and it adds so much to the game specifically the the part i'm most excited about and and we've we've talked about this quite a bit because i played the shit out of this when uh when a it was in the, the original board game and if you take a look uh in the front, we did some play testing together. Um, yeah. But uh, the Mad Jackal function is so cool and, and very exciting for me to uh, dig into. We were talking about how the game generally is. It seems more more um, solo friendly. And it's another really great example of something that can be played solo. That's just a blast. If anybody gets a chance. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, oh, sorry. Go on, Sherwin. I was going to say, I'm not going to take any credit for that whatsoever. That was um, my colleague Fraser, the lead developer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he kind of, he really wanted to like run with that. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool. Just go nuts. See, let's see what you can do. Because at the time, Fraser was very new. Uh, and that's yeah. why he wanted to cut his teeth. And, and I'm more than happy to let him run and see what he did. And I think what he came up with is super fun. It's effectively the same as same as what, you know, the uh, the full survivor was for RE2, right? right? It's just a super fun mode for you just to sit down and blast through once you finish the main campaign or whatever else. <clears throat> so, yeah. Right. What really excites me, Sherwin, is I know when the campaign was going on and we kind of talked back and forth and um, we were musing on the possibilities of sort of furthering the, the universe or, or things from outside of, of Resident Evil. <clears throat> and I'm very excited to have that deck of mad jackal cards because i feel there's really unlimited fan potential in those yeah we can yeah. If we want to make you know procedurally generated like outbreak scenarios we can totally use that deck for like a procedurally generated dungeon as it were um a procedurally generated raccoon city um super exciting um i'm i, I i'm really excited to see what the community does and creates with it um this is uh, also interesting. I'm just playing it. Like I said, we're, we're at this point, we're done unboxing because we've unboxed everything. And part, the next, what, we're, what we plan to do next on the show is talk about some like cool beautification tips that people can take to kind of get the most out of their board game experience. Um, but I do want to mention these. Uh, I love the new matte kind of look of the. Uh, I don't know if I, if I'm not seeing it right, but is it is there more of a matte on these than there was in the original tiles? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the other ones had more of a gloss kind of finish to it. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, the tiles were something, we've talked a bit about it, I don't necessarily want to dive into it now, because it's it's sort of old old, old hashing old ground, but we definitely looked at this from a perspective of, you know, learning what happened, you know, we kind of went in a direction for the first ones, and we had some feedback, and we listened and went, you know what, let's let's Mm -hmm. blast through this way and really kind of smash it out of the park this time, and I think that that certainly seems to have paid dividends, because everyone loves it, so... 
You absolutely killed I, it. I, I will happily time. tell you that I think I probably spent more time looking at the tiles uh, to make sure that they were right than any other component in that box. <laughs> um, to just make sure we, I knew that was very much a sort of tension point. We needed to get that that right. For sure. So, and um, like I say, you killed it, though, man. These look phenomenal. Really do. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait to, to dig into it. Uh, are there any uh, what, what's uh, so talking about board game beautification maximization? Uh, is there anything that you like to do when you get a new board game to try to you know get your experience dialed in so you can kind of have the best time with it as you as you play? No, I th I think in a weird way the most important thing for me is always to make sure the first time you play it's it's not necessarily anything that cosmetic you can do. For me, it's all about the journey and the experience when it comes to any game. And I think the most important thing you always should do is make sure you sit down with like the right group of people to play the first time because that's right. really gonna that's really gonna color your experience every single time that you right. actually think about that game where you go to play that game, right? If you have a good experience the first time out, it's gonna be great because you're you know, you're gonna remember that constantly and bounce back at that mm. and then just go from there. Whereas I think if you kind of have that slightly rough experience with a group who doesn't get it, then you kind of, it's that yeah. much more effort to then break up in the box next time and go through again, especially if some of the rules are wrong or whatever else. Whereas if you're having a fun time with your buddies and, you know, it's, it's a you know a group you play with all the time, it doesn't matter if you get some of the rules wrong because it's just kind of a fun story, right? Right. You can, you can play through it, play through it. And then, so, you know, if there's a group chat, this is what happens in my group chat is somebody will message, oh, guys, we played that rule wrong. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll fix it next time. And then we do. Um, but yeah, one of the things I appreciate, I've always appreciated about Resident Evil, um, the, the Resident Evil board game has been just how simple it has been to pick up and play. Um, yeah, I, I mean, also, you and I are veterans of, uh, of working some awesome Gen Cons together, but right. yeah, absolutely. The, the best, the best thing about Resident Evil is kind of the board game engine is just like, I've, I've sat down with groups and I'm like, right, so this is what you do in their turn. And by the time you get around to that person's next turn, they are ready to go. They're good to go. Like they're, 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 yeah, they're good to Not even are they good to go. They're like, right, I know exactly what's happening in my turn. I'm going to do this and this and this. Let's keep going. And it just speeds up. Like, and it, you, it's, it's super cool. In that capacity, you'll notice that if there's a... I'll see you later, KDB. also want to point out uh, Ferdinand uh, also said hello to you earlier, Sheridan. Uh, he's a friend of ours joining us from the Netherlands. Hey, Ferdinand. Um, I really must get the Twitch stream up, but I haven't got it on my screen, so probably <laughs> okay. the last question uh, that I got funny, We are just taking Sharpies, and we are... Yeah, edging. so this is something that uh, Adam actually showed me how to do with my Resident Evil board game. Uh, and we're just taking a little Sharpie action to the to the exposed cardboard edges of the board game hmm. to darken it up so that you don't see the, the naked cardboard. A little bit like when we had the uh, samples and we basically had them of like a hard foam do that. I can see why it looks awesome. And it's cool. It's a nice right. customization. People, it just kind of seamlessly kind of blends to the table as opposed right. to having this kind of dark because of the, the edge of the tiles is obviously black. Having like the stark white of the bear card. Um, it's yeah. just a nice little thing to, to improve the look. It's definitely not necessary. But yeah, but at the same time, like it's again, it's it's what you want to make of your thing, right? right? And I think right. it works. It definitely fits. Um, let me ask you another question, Sherwin. In terms of, uh... oh, I'm sorry, Choji also said hi, Sherwin. I apologize. Uh, Ferdinand's just still hey, on man. the screen. Just a quick heads up as well. I have an orange sharpie here, and I'm gonna do the Ooh. edge of this. Oh orange. man. He's showing off token. now. So just so you well, don't have to just. He's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna be good until you make him like draw the stripes on. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go through with my black sharpie and do all the sh no. Well, then, then all I'm hearing is that somebody's gonna half-ass it. Yep. Um. See, there we go, guys. We have one token there with the orange edge, mm -hmm. with the white Talk edge. Talking about running this game at a convention, as Sherwin pointed out, we, we worked a couple of shows together. And um, being a veteran of the circuit, uh, one of the things I, I always find most uh, frustrating about teaching a game to people is when people aren't cued in and you're trying to like pull their attention back every time it's their turn. Um, I mentioned that because it was a problem I didn't have when res running the Resident Evil game. Because the, the turn structure is so fast that people don't have time to tune out before it's their turn again. <laughs> yeah, very deliberate design as well. That's one thing we wanted to happen. Like we did, we didn't want to kind of have something which 
which caused me, which was too delayed because the worst thing in the world is when you sit down to play a game, right? And you kind of do your turn and then you kind of just, you're on your phone or you're chatting to somebody or you're yeah. making tea if you're British or whatever you're doing. <laughs> well, like, you know, kind of, what, well, because you take forever to get around to your turn and right. that sucks. And especially with Resident Evil where everyone's turns are integrated anyway, because even though you're not actually doing anything, you're looking at the map, you're going, right, so so where are the zombies coming up? It's an interactive experience. Everyone's always talking, communicating about the best way to proceed. Like, mm-hmm. oh, if you do this and shut this door, they won't grab me this turn, and then I can jump out in my turn and we'll do this. Like, right. all of that stuff. Or, or, you know, enemies interact with you on other people's turns because they're trying to bite you or whatever else. There's always yeah. something to do. We want it to be super quick fire. I, I really love that about the game. And um, one of the things uh, Adam and I were talking about at the start of the show as well is what the um, the new mechanics added to the game and uh, the new like exploding barrels, the, the addition of barriers and open doorways um, don't make the game more necessarily complicated or harder, um, but do a lot to make the game a little more engaging. Uh, and I think that's really cool as well. Um, exploding barrels feels really satisfying. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's quite interesting. I saw a Facebook post earlier today about someone going, am I doing this right? Because this feels super easy. And everyone's like, yeah, this is the tu- this is the exploding barrel t- tutorial mission. <laughs> you're definitely doing it right. Like, this is where you're going to learn to do that. Enjoy it, because you're not going to get that again. Like, you know, that sort of thing. And, um, no, I, I think it's it always adds extra tactical depth, doesn't it? Like, there's so much yeah. stuff in terms of RE3, like the fire, for example, hitting enemies back into the fire, uh, kind of exploding barrels. Um, just the way some of the enemies, like new enemies, work, like the crows and stuff. Like there's there's loads of elements that are really designed around making things much more about tactical. You know, we had this in the second game, but it's sorry in the first game. But it's it's about thinking about positioning. It's about right. So we can bait these enemies into here to take care of business, or we can, um, you know, and in terms of how to progress, the more that you layer in that stuff, the more the players feel clever and smart for kind of. For catching yeah. out enemies in a certain way or whatever else that's cool mm-hmm. like i've always enjoyed that part of things because people you know when they they figure things out that's that's a key bit of the experience if if people always think they're on the back foot and they never really feel like they've got any element of control they can leverage on the game then they start to feel like okay i'm, I'm not enjoying this so much whereas if you give right. people cool stuff and payoffs to do at that point it's really satisfying when it happens like you said about the exploding barrel yeah, like yeah. killing four or five zombies in one shot like that feels awesome like, and and, do and that as much as possible. And here's the thing: is like setting up that four or five zombies in a shot is also something that, like, that takes teamwork. Um, because you you know because of how the the nature of how the zombies react is you'll you'll be able to pull them in and kind of bait them into an area you want, just like you could in. And I say this every time I talk about either of these board games, uh, like a broken record. It's like just like in the board game, you can kind of like, you know, pick up a couple of them. And, like, run around a bit to, like, line them up in a way where then you can just get that big blasty blast that kills everybody on the screen. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think so. And I think um, I'm, I'm slightly crossing the streams here, guys, so sorry. But um, I imagine you definitely had that with Bard's song as well. Yeah, yeah, we did. He, he, said, he, said, he, yeah. Says, he says spoiling uh, the fact that Michael <laughs> is one of our playtests for Bard's song. But, um, <laughs> you did it, not me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. But um, yeah, I think the tactical depth that you probably had there was was sort of next level because obviously we start having extra custom abilities and stuff. But but anyway, back to Resident Evil. Um, right. This Evil, is, no. this is I'm, I'm crashing your thing and talking about no, completely other like products. No, this is um, what we're here for. Show it. I, I, yeah. So obviously in, in this game you have this map system, campaign system that kind of really yeah. elevates... I was wondering, well, I got a couple of questions for you. The first one is, were you ever sort of played with the idea of maybe adding like a character progression system as well? Or was that something that was just off the table from from Capcom from day one? Or was that ever a thought that crossed your mind with with introducing like a much more in-depth campaign system? So... The honest answer is, I mean, it did cross my mind, but it was almost vetoed immediately and not by Capcom, by my, by us. One of the things mm-hmm. that we always do whenever we make any game, I've talked about this before, is we try to work out what the core experience the players mm-hmm. who, you know, who, who are familiar with the license uh, have. You know, we want to we want to dig into kind of, you know, what makes this game feel like, you know, what makes Resident Evil feel like Resident Evil? Yeah, you know, what, what doesn't Resident Evil do and why? 
And sometimes that's an answer where you look at it and go, well, it doesn't do this because at the time that wasn't the way the games were put together or that just didn't really easily fit into the player experience. And that doesn't necessarily mean you don't do it in an adaptation because sometimes that sort of thing can work. But it was more so much part of making Resident Evil feel like it feel like it did was really feel like it does is more so much just going right so is there leveling up in resident evil no so do we want it in our game well what's the compelling reason to put it in to make it feel that way you know can can we do that in a way that still feels like you know you're playing resident evil can can we do that in a way what what do we get out of this game by putting it by putting a leveling up system in and then honestly my my biggest concern was really that for example, the gameplay hasn't, you know, we've talked about the different tactical depth, and exactly as you guys said, like the archways creating like, you know, larger tiles, sort of the meaningful decision of do I break down a barricade or not. Right. Um, you know, kind of fire, you know, fire and um and other stuff like pushing enemies around, that sort of stuff, and flooding when you guys get off to that. Right. All, all various different bits and pieces. There's lots of tactical decision going on, and everything else, but it doesn't really la- add any extra there's small pieces of complexity, but nothing right. too heavy duty for the main game, which is cool. Mm. My bigger concern was is we'd already layered on this massively complex kind of map, and it doesn't matter how how easy that may come across. I'm I hesitant to describe it as elegant because it feels very uh, self-aggrandizing. I don't want to do that, but um, so I'll say how it. elegant and great it is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but we'd already laid in this map, which I was slightly concerned at going. You know what? This could be. This is a this is where I'm spending my collect complexity points for this game. This is something where players are going to be looking at this and working out how it works. And even once even once you've got it, like the the initial step to get there, I didn't want to be too much of a barrier. And if you were layering in like a leveling up step into that as well, I was concerned that cool. that might be too much where kind of players are going, right, so we finished this we finished the scenario right. Now we've got to level up. So uh, we've got to choose where to expend our XP and our skill trees or whatever else. Right, now we've right. done that. Now let's look at the map and see what we've unlocked. It's like a whole bunch of extra steps when really what you want to be doing is ducking back into the city and gunning down zombies and finding right. different items that you can progress. And the honest answer was is, well, what are you going to get? Maybe, oh, maybe a once per you know like scenario I get a dodge or maybe I get to you know, roll an extra re-roll attacks right. or something. Right. And, and at that point, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not sure any of that stuff is worth the extra step. And the I'm not sure it feels really evil. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I agree with that. I, I understand that, um, which is fine because because y'all ended up making um, you'd mentioned it earlier uh, a couple of games where progression like that is a big right. part of the player experience. Um, right, and yeah, it's, it's horses for courses, right? So right. Sometimes exactly. that, that doesn't necessarily fit Resident Evil, but yeah, we said Bard Song earlier. Like that game's got that in spades. Like <laughs> if, if you're doing that, and that's unsurprisingly that's what Fraser and I went straight onto after this. So nice. we kind of right. all of all of our needs to kind of design uh, all of our needs to design a level up system we might have had all our mm. thoughts about Resident Evil and just threw that into Bard Song. So <laughs> it's uh, interesting. I have, a, I have another question for you actually. Go ahead, Sherwin, Which I don't know how much you can talk about it, but do you are you fearful of? going to resident evil one now because in in a sense you know it's you're step stepping back. backwards yeah um you're not you don't have exploding barrels to lean back on you don't have as many items that you know i mean obviously you have items that unlock areas but you don't have like a big map or anything like that you don't have like a, a whole city to kind of play with you you have a, a very limited mm-hmm. space um and kind of what was the challenges there and and what are you kind of nervous about you know, every single conversation about I have about Resident Evil makes me so, so, so happy. Like, I have the <laughs> stupidest, widest grin when I'm in the meetings talking about Resident Evil and we're building bits and pieces for it or whatever else. Um, I have... Like, my biggest my biggest concerns or my biggest worry about Resident Evil is is my imposter syndrome, which just, just basically says, like, this is the game you've wanted to make since dot. Like, you know, since you literally first sat down in front of a PlayStation and started doing stuff. Like, right, right. Uh, it, and it's more so much to kind of like make sure it looks good, make sure it feels good, make sure it works. And, and fortunately enough, I think we have the, we have definitely a solid engine to fall back on. Oh, yeah. Uh, the art, the artwork I've, I've already seen is, is, is incredible. I've got no other words for it. it it's just incredible. So, I'll, I'll and, jump in um, real quick while you're talking. Sure, yeah. sure. Are, are we going to be treated to more original art like we did in 3? 
uh, as in terms of tiles and stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, in promotional art. You've got, you've got wonderful promotional, of art. like, yeah. Um, definitely yeah, the, the character designs. The, the front of the last escape book, you have the, the four character designs there. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. Is this going to, are we going to see something like this for? We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything too much. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one off for the moment, but I, I certainly oh. know, but back to where I was saying, I know, for example, when we're looking at RE1, I know we've got, definitely we are, uh, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, but we have a solid enough foundation to already not have to worry, to basically focus on the really cool stuff and making sure that sort of things, because a lot of the stuff that we would look at in terms of, you know, the core engine of the gameplay and so on is, is, is already singing in a really good way. The way I generally approach a lot, the way I approach RE2, RE3, and when we start thinking about RE1, was very much right in the same sort of way of the video games. So we've got our engine of how it works. Right. So now, what do we add to that to make it really cool, make it better? And for RE3, it was like right. So let's add in the, let's add in the narrative cards. Let's add in the um, like the city tracker. Let's add in the danger right. level stuff. Those are the next step up. I mean, yeah, we'll do little gameplay polishes here and there. You know, like we've got exploding barrels and barricades and stuff now, so that kind of levels up. So what do we get to for RE1? Well, or RE, I should say. Well, yeah, we can just progress on a little bit from there. And I think um, already the stuff that I'm talking about is just phenomenal. Um, and it, it's just solid. It makes me so, so happy. That's, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. That's really exciting I think you guys are going to have a blast with it. Um, I, I'm very excited to hear that. And... Uh... Look for. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, can, I can give you the other sort of man. I'm so scared. It's gonna be crap. No, but I, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that for a moment. Can I? Can so. I? Can I speculate for a moment? Sure, shoot. Sure. Um, so thinking about what you said earlier and what you said in the past, if if I were to speculate that the the remake would be more focused on creating that, because the first Resident Evil, like, what do you feel when you play that one? It was, uh, it was very tense. Um, fewer or felt like there were fewer resources around. Um, the atmosphere is very, is very, very scary, and I think you could probably, would I, potentially speculating, that the narrative cards could become to come into play in a really interesting way, um, in that regard. Okay, that's. I mean, my... I'm not going to give you an answer. I'm not going to give you an answer, yes or no. Oh, that's fine. Uh, that's just but, my. But uh, I will. Uh, I remember hat. this conversation, Michael, and we'll go from <laughs> there. <laughs> um. Because I definitely don't want to get you in trouble by talking about something you ought not. Right. Uh, we, we should be focusing on what we have, not what we want. Um, and uh, have you uh, have you had a chance? So have you ha you haven't had a chance to play through your copy uh, yet? You're still waiting on it. Uh, RE three. No, I've got yeah. my copy of RE three now. Nice. Um, I mean, I, I've already played through the campaign several times over. So it's at this stage, it's just the bit where. Obviously, I, I get to actually use models, um, right. and the actual <laughs> models and the actual assets, instead of bits of instead of bits of paper with like you know from like a PowerPoint presentation or something. But oh yeah, but no, it's it's um no, it's it's just nice to do. It. I mean, I, I'm probably going to play. Funnily enough, I was trying to set up a game for later on this evening, which um, but my my normal D and D group have uh, have bailed on me today. Oh which no, is why I've, had a couple, well, I've had a little bit of time to kind of sit down and hang out with you guys. Well, no, good things came. Right. But um, I was trying to organise a sort of pickup game of RE with one of my buddies, but he's not around, so uh, it'll probably have to wait till maybe this weekend or the weekend following. But I'll start a campaign with those guys, mm -hmm. um, and it'll be good to blast through. I'm intrigued to see. Uh, at the moment, I've um, I'm yet to achieve, slightly embarrassingly, I'm yet to achieve an S rank finish. Wow. Uh, this, and an ending on this game, I've got A uh, a couple of times, and I'm I'm trying to get to that that fabled S rank finish. Uh, which I'm pretty sure I can do. Which, uh, speaking of S rank finish, which copy of the board game did you get? I, I'm a painter, so I, I went with the uh, I went with the normal one. I didn't necessarily have to have the uh, the S rank finish. I mean, the, the S rank is really there for people who aren't painters and want a little mm -hmm. bit more immersion or wanted right. some different right. uh, style to it. Precisely. So for me, I'm I'm going to go with the uh, the version which I imagine you both went with, which is exactly. just raw. Yeah. That way you can paint it right. Um, well, I actually recently have have backed a few kickstarters where i've gone for like the the kind of the ink finish just because yeah. it's just a case of me being like oh this this miniatures game has like a hundred models in it i'm not right. gonna realistically sit there and paint them all 
But I honestly really think the beauty of this game is in its lack of miniatures, quote unquote. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't just have miniatures for the sake of having miniatures. No, I absolutely agree. Um, like you look at some of these campaigns and you, you end up with so many miniatures that some of them are never gonna see the table because you have so many. I love the fact that you know you've got everything from Resident Evil in there, everything from Resident Evil 3 in there, everything you need, and you can feasibly like what we'll be doing on the stream every week. And if you follow along, you can get your whole box painted up in time. You know, it's not going right. to be a, a thing that sits on your back. Um, right. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. Like we wanted to make, I mean, some of that is the design ethos of the game, but the rest of it is something where we wanted to make it a concise, punchy experience and having buckets of miniatures and, and that kind of rolling dice of, you know, things and buckets of dice kind of thing can be fun across the, you know, at right. first, but saps a lot of the tension, a lot of the moment out. Every single interaction you have with an enemy in Resident Evil needed to be impactful and personal and need to be something where Terrifying. it really made you, it really made, yeah, it really kind of led yeah. you into storytelling. For sure. And at that point, it, it, at that point, we don't want to have buckets and buckets of miniatures. That's not really right. where the game is coming from. In this game, your health can just disappear. For you can, one minute, you're like, perfectly healthy and a couple of bad like evades and suddenly, <laughs> suddenly it's a whole different story you're not so healthy so. anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. i'm at fine i'll be okay hmm. <laughs> hunter wants to come by and say hi um <laughs> that's again one of the again one of my favorite things to see is is when people get that like that, that clutch evade um mm people getting that the, or, or failing it and then you see the rest of the table go oh it's like uh um there's a, a casino game i don't know if y'all have played called crafts where it's always the game you can tell if somebody's mm -hmm. having a good or a bad time because every five minutes there's the whole table shouting or <laughs> right. uh being very upset um, yeah exactly yeah. and uh i have yet to see a table of this game where that hasn't happened to some capacity um hmm. I'm putting together my uh, my game trace token dispenser and uh, want to comment. The this is this is gorgeous. I I love it. Mm. Um, yeah, I, the guys from Game Trays are a bit scary. How much they love their token trays and how much they <laughs> uh, how much thought they put into stuff. I I, lo I love working with them. They're they're incredible guys, but they are a bit scary when you kind of like they're really weird. Like. I, everyone gets everyone has their own approach to these things but they're the guys who get a board game and it's almost like you can see them grab the models throw them over their shoulder don't care grab the tile <laughs> throw them over their shoulder don't care like they they've got the calipers out and they're measuring the thickness of like the inserts and stuff <laughs> uh, and, and that sort of thing and they're looking at it kind of scratching their head oh there's wasted space here we could do this or this with it it's a really novel and interesting take they have to a lot of this stuff I, cool. I think that's really cool um been uh finding punching the board game to be uh to be quite an enjoyment enjoying experience um oh, i don't know that I that punching cards. oh me too it's the it's like when you get a new piece of tech and you peel off that that layer um, yeah the clear film that you peel off the front of a screen oh uh no, so yeah big big bot 70 in chat has said that he really uh was impressed with the game trades he really helped it setting up the the box um hmm. I think it's cool that there's kind of not really, uh, unless I haven't seen it yet. I, I've literally, I, I literally opened my box for the first time an hour and a half ago. So unless there's right. um, something I didn't see, there's not really a, here's how you set up your game trays. Um, kind of leaving you up no, to you. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, ultimately, I've seen a couple of people say, how do you fit things in there? But the honest answer is like, however you want. Like most of it is fairly intuitive, I think. And yeah. If it's if it's not like if it fits and you're happy with it going in there, then do it. Right, well, that's the honest answer. Like I kind of, I, I kind of enjoyed the puzzle solving element almost as slightly myself of pulling out all the different tokens, putting them in stacks, thinking right. So where do I think this goes? Where do I think this mm -hmm. loops or whatever? Oh yeah, that's that's been my. It's been like putting together a puzzle here. Right, and ultimately the the honest answer is if you're not sure it goes in there, that's fair enough. Like don't worry about it. Like right. as long as everything fits in your box, it doesn't really matter. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, have you uh, have you organized your boxes yet? Absolutely. As one of the first <laughs> things I did, it's uh, I wanted to. Well, one of the reasons why I always end up backing our projects is I want to have the end user experience. Right. I, I want to see when my copy arrives, how it arrives, 
yeah, in terms of yeah, what the pledge manager is like, kind of all that element stuff. It's really important to me with not just Resident Evil, all of our stuff, to make sure that that end to end is really um, focused on. I don't because I, no, okay. there's 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 valuable lessons to to learn there. There's val there's valuable experience to pick up on that, and it's always something where I like to see what that looks like, and that does mean obviously being part of the thing of getting your product through or whatever else and kind of. Yeah, when when I get it, I kind of open out the cellophane and I want to have that real end user thing. So, you know, open the box, enjoy the new box goodness kind of coming out. And then at that point, you know, start to, yeah, exactly as you guys are doing now, just punch out tokens, make sure how they fit into the trays or whatever else, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, Because ultimately that's that's how you learn. That's how you get from, and you know, from, from a game, you know, RE2, which succeeded in lots and lots of different things, but that's how you push it to the next level, which is what RE3 feels like for me. Anyway, yeah. No, I get that. Ways. So how, um, it's kind of how you get there. How confusing do you think conversations are going to get when we're recording the podcast for uh, for the resident for remake one, and we're going to be talking about it's the first game in the series, but it's the third <laughs> game in the series, not to be confused with the second game in the series, which is made out of the third game in the series. That came out. You know first. That came out yeah, first. You no, know, you know well, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let you guys do that. <laughs> I'll just I'll just sit there, ask direct questions, and then just go from there. My 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 biggest ones I keep on calling re one re one instead of re. But uh, um, that's, that's but, yeah, I get the same that's thing. The, that's the thing. It will do it's that. interesting. It's the, way, yeah, it's, it's the only way to really know. Yeah, it's interesting. What is actually really nice is to finally I've been sitting on this thing, the announcement for you know however many months. But um, I, I get some dropping in random spoilers and bits and pieces. Um, as much as I love our Resident Evil community, they're not always the, uh, they don't always jump on things I say immediately. For example, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the description we had for, uh, for when I was doing the character spotlights, and we were talking about the different characters in uh, on Kickstarter updates in Ferrari Three, and I mentioned for Brad Vickers, this is the third version of Brad Vickers I've designed. And I'm um, just waiting for someone to go yeah. <laughs> to catch Where the hat. Where did that come from? No one did. So Damn. there we are. You heard it. You heard it here, everybody. Sherwin visits the Facebook community and gives spoilers if you if you know how to look for him. You know, you guys. Yeah, you guys are the only reason I use social media at all anymore. <laughs> I, I really don't barely use it for anything else. It's such a joyful um, place. Um, I like checking it out, especially. Uh, I've been trying to been trying to avoid spoilers um, because I promised myself that I wouldn't look at anything or I wouldn't open my boxes until today. Um, but mm. my wife caught me peeking at the Facebook community yesterday. Um, oh, shame on you! Cool. I know, but the, the the Nemesis minis look so cool, man. I can't help oh, myself. Dude. Everybody's minis just look so great that I wanted to I wanted to look at them. Uh, mm. <clears throat> but no, I uh, go ahead, uh, Adam. I was just gonna ask Sherwin. So a lot, like a lot of games nowadays, use like legacy systems. Is that anything you ever considered? Yeah, we um, um legacy is a really interesting term because it means different things to different people. Right. Um, like there's some people who are like tearing up their cards, can't use them ever again, kind of thing. With the legacy. <laughs> yeah. There's other people who are kind of looking at it from a different perspective. And I mean, we ha we had something a bit like a legacy system for um. For Bard Song, just quickly going back to that for a second, oh. and and the, the feedback from the community was in, was very good, very well natured. It wasn't a horrible toxic thing, but <laughs> I the, 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 the feedback was overwhelmingly like, "Please don't do this." And like, I just be, I, this, I, is, this is not what we want in any way, shape, or form. We sure. really don't like yeah. this. And as a result, we went, "Okay, cool." Like, yeah, we're not above listening. Like, sometimes you're going to get it wrong or whatever else. And we were able at a stage in that in that pro project to to change course and, and kind of go a different way. And I, um, I think maybe the, the re, you know, obviously I was, I backed Bard Sung. I was around for that and, and yeah, kind of same. heard that. But I, I think that the reason for that would be that Bard Sung just seems very, I mean, it seems so replayable that people definitely wouldn't want a legacy system on that. Um, whereas for Resident Evil, I feel like it could work um, in, in certain ways. Um mm. Yeah, I, I, think, I like games that have like a bit of a mix of both, where they have maybe like an envelope that once you've completed the campaign, you can open it and it gives you a little like story so, and there's a, a couple um, of, you know some item cards or something that's fun. There's that you a, can use. like another... Resident Evil would work with it because of its um, because of its unlocks in the games. Like, oh, you've unlocked the unlimited ammo, whatever. Like to have a couple of cards like that in an envelope would be really cool. 
Um, there's a game that I backed on Kickstarter and recently received, uh, Dice Throne Adventures, their legacy system. Oh. It, it just, you have to play through the campaign and all it is is like, hey, add this stuff and we're, they just kick the, the game engine up to the next level and just, the they... Three already does that. Well, yeah. It has like a legacy tension deck and so um, it's, we're already kind of building the story with these cards that are going into the I'm deck. I'm really very cool. excited to experiment with more of that because, yeah. um... <clears throat> There's there's just a lot of content here. I uh, seeing a lot of this stuff. I'm convinced that they, they didn't show us everything during the testing, which I imagine uh, was by you, design. You would be one. You would be 100 correct. We need to have yeah. You guys feel a little bit surprised when you open boxes. <laughs> um, um, the truth, but yeah. I mean, like I, I know I did a little bit of back end stuff that even Fraser was surprised by a couple of bits that I dropped in there for him to find. But um, but yeah. Nice. I think some of it, um, like the epilogue cards, for example, is obviously uh, something I don't think you guys would have got your hands on. Mm -mm. Um, and some sense. of the extra modes, and some of the extra modes like knife only and stuff. Um, knife only is super fun, by the way. Just throwing it out there, if you guys. Really? Yeah, I just like looked that... at the I just looked at the knife only card, the knife, and it, I was like, oh, that looks like it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's it's quite entertaining. It's it, it's it's less fun when you get to like Nemesis Stage Three or the Grave Digger. But right. at the same time, not. But at the, at the same time, still kind of entertaining. Um, you just have to approach those fights very differently. Um, is all. Is there? Um... Because one, one of the, one of the things that I, I'm spoiling things slightly for people because they may not have got this far in the game yet. But but those two bosses especially, and this won't be any surprise for Nemesis Three. Um, you're looking at your environment to do damage to them as well as just your weapons. Right. So with that, so with that in mind, um, yeah, the knife only mode isn't actually you know, a thing that's it certainly works on that basis. So to to that point, I'm looking at the uh, the boss tile right now that has the um, the park on the one side and the oh uh, yeah the, okay the laser on the other. The laser has those phys those uh, bright light indicators. Is that where the damage would be applied in that boss fight? Uh, well, if you look at the um, if you look at the artwork and have a look at the trench that's been blasted out from it, I think that's fairly <laughs> obvious. Yeah, um, totally. Uh, my, my my best advice to you: do not be in that path when it fires. Do sure. not be in that path when it <laughs> fires, um, or you may find yourself resetting very quickly. No, nah, just put Marvin in the path. Use put him Mar as bait. Uh, oh yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Marvin loves that stuff. So yeah, um, no problem there at all. Looking at <laughs> looking at this tile, we were talking about this earlier. Um, I don't know. We've talked much about RE three make. Um, but like seeing this in 98 was like, man, I can't believe they have that giant laser that fits in that room like that. Um, that's so high tech. And then you get to, uh, remake three and she literally just picks up a giant rifle and that's what it is. And that's what the same 1998 still that time. Days. Um, yeah, but, but at the same time, Nemesis and Nemesis at the end of that uh, is like a Final Fantasy boss. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. it's a very different thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's cool. I mean, I I like the vision for what they did with. Um, I like the vision what Capcom had for RE3's remake. I think it was. You can't just remake things one to one always, and right. sometimes I think I think I think that games are this this concise fun experience. I think I think a lot of stuff they did with it is cool. I um, I, I tell people I like playing that. I, I liken play, uh, session like playing through that game uh, makes me reminds me of like watching RoboCop, like as a kid because RoboCop's a long movie. Um, it's like two and a half hours long, but it's you know it's this big adventure. There's a lot of people that get blown up. There's like you know badass robot guys. And that's what re re three make is. Three make is, you know, Jill being a badass, Carlos being a badass, lots of zombies getting killed. Oh. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's fair. Still gutted that Sherwin vetoed a physical particle, uh, Pericles sword mini when I mentioned it during the Kickstarter due to size. I've seen the Thunder Chop. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, I can't really say anything based on that. Yeah, okay. Like, I always get stung with stuff like that now. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, but then Monster Hunter came along. I'm like, well, you... Uh, uh. See it? Um, there's actually a couple of questions in chat. Um, Choji is asking, Sherwin, do you get an employee discount when you back a Kickstarter? Uh, yes, uh, although it depends how I approach how doing it. So If yeah. we back through Kickstarter, I'm assuming, obviously, that no, because it's just a Kickstarter platform. Right. Uh, are, the, got it? The are the holes for the uh, count of the ammunition dial look bigger than in Resident Evil 2, the board game? They actually kind of feel a little... It feels tight when you're pushing stuff through. 
Um, which I, I imagine yeah. there's a, there's an issue with the handgun dial, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's where, a, it's where a slight, it shows uh, multiple. Oh, uh, I just assume yeah, it's whatever it's, one's in the middle. No, yeah, it's it's right. it's not. It's unfortunately it's it's a slight annoyance. It's not the end of the world because it's it's super obvious which is the right one. Right. Um, but it is at the same time. It's one of those things where I kind of roll my eyes a, a touch. If there is one thing that I'm a little bit unfor- I'm a bit sad about on this on this. It's that. But at the same time, it's not it's not a deal breaker. For, you know, right. It's not, it's not anything well. that breaks the game and makes it unplayable. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's, it's not an A class bug in to get right. the appropriate language. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, overall, I've been finding my my assembly experience to be also quite delightful. Um. There's not too much. Oh, you're right. You're, you are right about the dial, by the way. The the actual thing is nice and snug yeah. when it goes in. Oh yeah, which is really nice because I just got the Street Fighter Kickstarter, mm. um, Street Fighter Two, and those dials are horrendous. They're so loose. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I would rather have a a, a bigger hole than have a, a very loose dial because that sucks. Same, if I'm honest, there man. There you go. <laughs> Bigger um, hole, if I not think... a slightly loose dial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wink, wink. Thank you, Sherwin. On that note, I think I'm going to disappear off a little bit, guys. But hey, it's been super fun. Appreciate Thank stopping you by, so man. much. We're yeah, I perhaps at some uh... point, um, when I'm a bit more organized and have a bit more bandwidth, because that's Heck the biggest yeah. thing. Maybe I'll join you for a whole, a whole uh, thing. We can have a hangout chat where you paint some models and um, we'll go from Heck, that. If you have Heck, a camera yes. that you can point at a model, you can join us. The um, okay. the, uh, well, the kit here, by the way, just to let you know, is, is very easily expandable. So if you wanted to try that sometime, it'd be easy to accommodate. I well, may well do. I uh, <clears throat> It's more about bandwidth for me. No, I'm, I completely uh, understand. Been, You're a busy guy. Working on about a million different things. But if I can fit in, then I will do so. Hey, uh, Sherwin, thank you so much for dropping and surprising us with a visit. Definitely appreciate you having on the show. Um, uh, thank you for pleasure. having me. That was really cool. Like, really awesome. It was super cool, and th- yeah, thank you for this experience. This is turning I, out to be my favorite board game. I I can't wait to play it. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, awesome. Well, uh, let me let me know how it goes on, and uh, we'll definitely, brother. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take it easy. And uh, once again, I want to thank uh, that was Sherwin, everybody, lead designer uh, for the Resident Evil Three board game. Um, cool guy. That's right. We got we got the hook up. Came back at the wrong time. Um, <laughs> it's true, yeah. Sherwin popped in and and hung out with us for a bit. It was uh, it was cool. Gave us some insights on the the kind of design process yeah. for three and a, a few little kind of ideas and tidbits for for number one as well. Maybe a uh, maybe a little bit of uh, a little teaser, a little bit of uh, a little bit of secrets that he shared. Um, one of my favorite things about board games now. Uh, Gloomhaven, the new Gloomhaven game did it, uh, Jaws of the Lion, um, so did Dice Throne, and so is this one, is you get like a nice little, like, like having this little tray here makes it a wonderful thing for when you're playing your board game, and you just have the, you have it onto the side, and you're like, all right, what token do I need? Okay, I'm going to find the token that I need, and then put, and then you have the rest of your tokens in your little token space, it's a little caddy, love it. Right, and I've got, I mean, for Resident Evil 2, I, I 3D printed some token holders, um, it's nice not to have to print stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I, that's one of the things I think is really cool about the game tray stuff, um, specifically. All right, so that's not so, where those go. So you want to pimp out a couple of those tokens? Yeah, let's pimp out a couple of these tokens. Hey. So I've got a few here that I can show you that I have done for... These are Warhammer Quest Curse City tokens. So as you can see on this side, this is just the regular side. I, I have yeah. some half done so I can show you. This is just what the regular tokens look like. I have marked the edges black with my Sharpie. You definitely want to do that if you're going to upgrade them. And I'm going to flip them over. And this is the side with the dimensional magic on. And I don't know oh, if you wow. can see that on it, but they're kind of beveled. Yeah. Um, that, got, it, yeah. Kind of, it, round, it rounds the edge off. Um, I like it, that. It just, it just makes them tactile so you can't damage them. Because this is card. If I scrape my thumb across it hard enough, I will rip it. Right. But I cannot do that to this side because it is like a little acrylic sheet on the on the top of it. So, so the only... Like... Yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, the only question I have is whether or not those will affect how these fit into the container. Now, they probably will. They do increase the thickness of the token, not by a whole deal. Um, but obviously, 
they will increase the thickness. So it's up to you if you want to do this. I'm going to do it just because I'm actually going to uh, be packing all of my stuff into um, the kind of item chest box that you got with the the, the video game. Um, By the way, talking about Adam's yeah. method for board game tiles, you can see the difference between these two tiles here. I'm actually going to sandwich yeah. this one with another one. So you can kind of see how the the black looks against the other cardboard. Um, and that's uh, that's just a Sharpie pen. That's what, we, that's what yeah. we were doing while we were just jamming out with Sherwin. Yeah, just a chisel tip Sharpie to give you that black <laughs> edge just again because it just makes it, it look nice. I'll grab one that I've done as well here and put it between a couple. So... It's as simple as that. Check this out. Look how look how neat that is. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try and get mine. There it is. Gorgeous. Stand out so you can see it. <clears throat> I'm gonna try it. So out. once it's lying on the board, obviously, if if this this was the or, or the, the playing surface. You can see they just kind of the black just helps it blend in. And I, I can't get a good angle of that to show you of it just being on the table. It's, um... But yeah, it, just take it before you lay an orange sharpie to the edge as you can see. Yeah. I'm probably still going to do black on, on like all of them. Definitely. You can I, do I don't have however an orange. you wish. I don't have an orange one. Well, I mean, I'm not special. I just went and bought a big pack of chisel tip shelfies from Target. Well, maybe well, maybe some of us hadn't thought about doing that. <laughs> so I'm going to show you quickly how this this the, Mod Podge dimensional yes, magic works. Please. So this this is what I use for Imagine. my tokens pull my tray out so i don't get any on my my nice yes plan i was gonna say there's a few things you want here so you want a tray um preferably like with some i mean you don't have to put any like foil down or anything to like line it it's entirely up to you i would use a tray that you don't mind ruining because once this stuff dries it's it's impossible to, to uh, remove yeah i mean you can get it off it's just going to be a, a pain don't shake it if you shake it, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So don't don't shake this bottle. Right, it's like so, water effects. Do so not shake. I uh, all right. So how do, how does this work? I got my bottle here. Do I just squirt yep. it on? So what we do is we'll just now these are going to have to dry for about twenty four hours. Oh. So so put it on something that you can move to a place that isn't going to be disturbed. I'm actually okay. just going to do it on my mat and then I'm going to leave leave it here for for twenty four hours. All right. Um, and so. it's 24 hours per side. Yes. All right. I'm not going to do these minis because I want to. I'm. We're we're going away to the shore this evening, and I want to be able to play with my game. Um, yep. So take a, a random. Just take one of your random tokens. And uh, that you don't need multiples of, maybe like a wound token or something. I'm grabbing. I got it. I got it. Or a hazard marker off of the because you have plenty extras on the RE2 tiles as I'm well. I'm actually going to grab a couple of the door tokens. Yeah. Because you're probably not going to use those. Probably not going to use them. Right, that's perfect. Absolutely correct. I promise I'm not going to use them. <laughs> <laughs> they, that, that said, uh, I know Sherwin doesn't didn't want to rehash it while we were talking, but the the door tokens do look do look much more significant. Every, like, everything looks better. I like this everything. one a lot specifically because I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom it in here. Um, is that you can tell it's open also because there's light shining through it too. Right. Mm -mm. I played eight scenarios, uh, incomplete review. So by far, it is better than RE2 in every way that I already thought RE2 was brilliant. Yep, absolutely. Um, that's Honestly, what... what what excites me the most is the whole campaign backtrack unlock stuff. Is just it, it adds so much compared to just being like, well, we've done scenario one, let's yeah. do the scenario two. You know, it just it just squirted all over everything. Well, be careful. Careful. Gross. You can wipe it off. <laughs> wow, it is like water effects. All right, I'm going it's, in. I'm it's squirting. super easy. So it should just... What are you squirting on? I'm squirting it on a, on a door. 
Oh yeah, just... if, the best way to do it is just to run around the edge. Okay. So if you can see on my camera here, run all the way around the edge and, and then, then just fill it in. add a little pressure to fill in. And if you get any air bubbles, just take a sharp exacto blade and just pop them down. Okay. All right. And it's that simple. And it, it, it should just, it shouldn't run over the edge if you're careful. It's, it's pretty viscous. You're pretty viscous. Just like that. I know, right? And it'll <laughs> start to, like I say, it, it'll look dry before it is. Um, so just make sure you give it a day because you don't want to get fingerprints in them. So as you can see, I've got a pretty big air bubble in mine right here. And I'm just going to stick my knife into that. Just a little beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Come on, there you go. I got it. Um, how how much do I care about the veracity of the uh, the tip? Do I should I clean it before I put my lid back on, or does it matter? You, I just 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 like um, if you're using the bathroom, just give it a little shake or a wipe, and you'll be good. <laughs> nice. Hello. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And like I say, I can move the tokens around if I'm careful. Obviously, it won't spill because it holds very well. And once they're finished, you will have the domed, clear, little shiny plastic look. Just makes them look like acrylic tokens as opposed to cardboard tokens. And obviously you can do both sides. My knife that. isn't making my bubble come out. Uh, is it is it a fresh blade? Just use the point and just get it in there a couple times. Nope. That, that... Or move it to the edge. Move the bubble like to the edge and you I'm, should be able to get rid of it. I'm trying... He is, uh, <laughs> you know what? That, that bubble's gonna, that bubble is not having it. You can go a little harder on it as well if you want. I mean, it'll go. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is this means you war. Could, you could also get a bit of little bit of tissue if you want, and like. Clean up I'm about a to go. I'm about tissue. to go do the trick I know how to do with with lacquer on a, on a fucking. A little heat. Yeah, a little heat. Yeah, you could do that as well. Heat will work. Aha, I got it! Hooray! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Have it, have so that's, that's one way of, of... This is uh, edging your, your board game pieces <laughs> and and putting this on your tokens is obviously going to kind of upgrade your, your game somewhat. So there's a couple of other ways you can upgrade your game as well. The first and most Probably obvious just... one is painting your miniatures, which is what we'll be doing. <laughs> That's a big part of uh, what Adam and I do here at Itchy Painting. Right. So obviously um, we have the red of the board game miniature here and then the painted zombie here. Um, the bases are a little plain. So another thing that I did to pimp out my game is that I printed some... I 3D printed some bases that were the same diameter um, but have brickwork on them. So as you can see here... I will be Somebody's using a fancy. sharp exacto, and I will be doing my whole Resident Evil Three board game on, um, on bases like this. I'm going to be doing uh, my whole Resident Evil board game on on black bases. Sure, that's fine as well. I'll show you a couple of the other bases that I've got right now, so you can see them here. That's and, pretty uh, neat. Uh, where's the one that I cut him off of? Have I got that to hand just so when, I can show you? When I get oh. back home, I'm going to totally see that that looks up. cool. <laughs> as you can see, I, they are about the same size as the base. Not that it really matters, because the, the game doesn't punish you, but I obviously want to be able to fit about the same amount of miniatures um, onto the board spaces. So the only uh, thing that's going to bother me is the uh, the weird shape bases. I'm going to have to figure out how to make those. So. Uh, we'll figure it out. It's not. Yeah. It wouldn't be that terribly difficult. <clears throat> um, um, another thing you can do is mount your map. So the map is just on a piece of um, that is paper, something I am prepared to do. Right. So we can mount it or we can laminate it. I've mounted mine um, on just some polystyrene sheet, um, but like not like polystyrene that like comes to pieces. I used um, this stuff, this uh, evergreen polystyrene sheet. 0.4 inches thick. It's just a black, pla essentially black flexible plastic sheeting. Um, and I have... <laughs> oh no. 
this is the back of mine here. So you can see that I've mounted it. What are you all knowing? What did you do? Oh, it doesn't fit. No, it doesn't fit. Because um, it's exactly the right size for the box. Oh, you, your, your, your sheet doesn't fit. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a shame. What I did is, if you can see the corners here, I actually mounted extra cards into mine so that I have space for the whole deck. That's cool. So this has a little, little, little bit here for the no! for putting your cards so the lip is on the. <laughs> I just ruined my my. I got Mod Podge on my doodad. Don't get Mod Podge on your doodad. <laughs> uh oh. All right. So yeah, off. that's how I did my map, and it won't fit in the box now. Um, but like I said. I'm actually transferring all of my stuff to a larger box. So that said, um, if, if I had enough Mod Podge, I could literally just take Mod Podge and do the whole map with it. The the, the dimensional magic? Yeah, I just, just zoop it all over and I'd have this really yeah. cool like bubbly effect. You would have a yeah, I mean it would it would just be like a big token almost. That's funny. Um <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to, like, I was planning on laminating it, but knowing, hmm, what I could do, I do have a paper cutter. I could probably cut it if I wanted to, if I were keen on it, I could probably cut it, like, right here. Yeah. And have two, like, laminate this portion of it and then have yeah. this portion of it separate. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, but I don't know. I might take a look at the Facebook community and see what they, what they pull out. Yeah, I'll take a picture of mine as well to put it on the Facebook community mm. this afternoon. But like I say, I just used uh, like plastic card basically. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to copy that. I used two of these these black sheets, that are, like thick enough that, uh, and they both just one pack was enough to to fit my whole whole sheet on. And now it's just sturdier. And then obviously you could. You could cut that down to size so it would still fit in the box. Mine doesn't because I've added to it. Right. Um, but mine will be fitting into a larger box, so it's not, not a great problem. That's me. awesome. Um, well, that is uh, it is now 4 p.m., which is generally when we're usually done playing. Yeah, I have a I have a haircut to get to. So. Well, uh, I want to thank everybody um, for coming out. Thank you to Cho. Uh, big butt seventy. Thank you to. Uh, <laughs> I thought you said big butt seventy. I don't know his life, their life. Um, thank you again to Ferdinand uh, for hanging in there late with us tonight. Yeah. Um, and big butt seventy. Thank you for the follow. Um, so next week, obviously this week we will be posting a list of our paints. To Correct. Start the zombies. So we will list a full set of zombie paints. Um, there's only three different types of zombie in Resident Evil Three, I believe. Three different sculpts. Yep. So we're gonna probably try and paint each of them. Um, so we'll be painting three zombies on stream, and then obviously we'll paint the rest of our zombies up off of the stream. So the. After that, I think we'll probably go with a poll for what people want, right? Right. After the zombies, because that's that's our kind of intro to painting, and then we'll we'll ask people what they want painted, and we'll just get through it. Yeah, and that's how that's how we do it here on Itchy Painting. Please let folks know um, to to how to join us. Uh, we'll also uh, what I'll do this weekend, um, probably uh, probably by Saturdays. I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch something and. Uh, do a basic buy list for like what you can like some stuff that you can buy just to get started, because um, mini painting is uh, they they get the impression of being this expensive hobby, but it doesn't have to be. Um, if you if you take care of it in incrementally, it's not that big a deal. So we'll have something up for that exactly. as well. Exactly. So we're gonna try and have like a small shopping list, um, and then we'll just add to that as the weeks go on. So we'll have a basic list for the zombies as well as a couple of brushes and all the things that you might need just right. in case you don't have any of that stuff. Um, and then from then on, obviously, as we know what we're painting, we'll add more paints to the list. Correct. Um, 
And thank you, CM Morris ninety eight, for the follow. Just as uh, just as we're about to to head off for the night. Um, once again, thank you everybody for joining us. I have been Burger. I've been Adam. And y'all have been great. Thank you so much.